Hi. The last crossover in this series is the tonal transient. As with the spectrum crossover, it may seem difficult to understand, but it opens a very interesting way to apply effects. It splits partials into transient and tonal parts and distributes them to bands. The rightmost band receives the transients and the leftmost band gets the tonal parts. Bands in between receive a mix of both. Important, as in the case of the spectrum crossover, we again deal with partials here. Just keep it in mind if you hear something strange. Also, the crossover is linear phase and fully transparent. Now for a fun part. In the first example, I use the M phaser MB. Let's solo each band to check what they process. This band receives transients. And this one, tonal content. By the way, when I say a tonal, I don't necessarily mean a sound with a distinctive pitch. It can be anything with a cut-off attack. Think of a decay stage of the sound. Back to the example. I applied the phaser only to the tonal parts, and I left the band with the transients bypassed. Thus, the transients pass clean. This trick helped me to keep the stereo image centered and to have a stereo phaser at the same time. Here is a full band version of the same phaser effect. As you can hear, the stereo image is all over the place, which is normal for the stereo phaser. Pay attention to the bass drum in particular. For my second example, I use the M Distortion MB. Again, the tonal band has a distortion effect and the transient one has the effect bypassed. This time I wasn't worried about centering the stereo image. Instead, I wanted to add a different flavor to distorted drums. Things get especially interesting when I start moving the crossover point. I could modulate it easily like this. And again, here is a full band version. Quite different, isn't it? To become true masters of the tonal transient, we need to learn its parameters. Right click on the crossover and look at the crossover panel. Let's go from the top. The level slope controls a transition from one band to another. The higher the value, the less they have in common. The meaning is pretty much the same as with a frequency crossover slope. However, here, we are talking about a tonal VS transient content, not a frequency range. The transient release defines how fast transients decay. Typically, transients are very short events. However, you can prolong their decay time by increasing the value of this parameter.
To identify transients, we use a detector, and every detector has timing parameters. Here, they are expressed by the transient resolution controller. The smaller the value, the faster the detector's reaction. And as a result, more partials get identified as transients. As you can see, with small values, you can easily get unwanted stuff. And vice versa, higher values may create too long transient events. Fifteen milliseconds is usually a good compromise. As the name suggests, the smoothing smooths distortions caused by the crossover. Solo the band and set the smoothing to zero for their obvious manifestation. Increase it as much as you want. Just remember, higher values demand more CPU and lower band separation. The tone slider controls the spectral slope applied by the detector. To visually see it in action, check out the slope parameter in M Analyzer. Higher values give more energy to high frequencies and vice versa. It can help the detector to decide where it needs to look for transients. The spectral resolution defines the size and overlap of FFT analysis. It controls the spectral transformation settings. Higher values give a better frequency resolution, but may smear transients. Smaller values give sharp transient response, but poor frequency resolution. Fifty percent is usually a good compromise. Try and see what works for your sound source better. Well, that's all. Now you know the theory, and all you need is practice and more practice. The last note. After watching this series, you have possibly got an impression that I was trying to convince you to use all these crossovers on every possible occasion. Of course not. I was just trying to show you new territories that are right under your fingers. And if you explore them, you may discover some very interesting tricks for your production. Happy music making and thank you for watching. <laughs>